Christmas traditions on this edition of Truth and Love. Johnson, and you're listening to Truth and Love, a podcast of the Association of Certified Biblical Counselors, where we seek to provide biblical solutions to the problems that people face. Today on the podcast, I have with me Randy Patton. And for many of you who have been around ACBC for quite some time, Randy is no stranger to you. Uh, He's the president of Team Focus Ministries, an organization that seeks to increase the discipleship effectiveness of evangelical Christians and churches through public proclamation of Scripture and private coaching. Previously, he served 16 years as the executive director of the National Association of New Thetic Counselors, which we all know is now called ACBC, and uh, he was the founding board member of the Biblical Counseling Coalition. Randy, listen, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Every time we get together, I enjoy our time together, and and I think this will be a fun one. Brother, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Dale. It's great to be a part of ACBC, and I rejoice in how God's leading the organization, and it's prospering under your wise leadership. God bless you. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. You know, I always tell people it's exciting for us. We stand on shoulders of men just like you, and we're we're able to pick some of the fruit that you guys labored so hard for for so many years, and I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Today, we want to talk about Christmas traditions, and this is something that, that Heath started that I— I did not want to let go. I love this time of year. This is one of my favorite times of year with my family. And I want to talk to you about some of the Christmas traditions, uh, Randy, that you, that you all do in the Patton family. I want to first start with, think about maybe one of the neatest or most memorable moments of your childhood around Christmas and, and part of what makes it so special to you. Yeah, I grew up uh, in southeastern Ohio, and uh, I'm the oldest of four children. We lived in a small home that my dad built after, right after I was born. So I've always been a bit of an early riser. And on Christmas mornings, sometimes I would get up real early before the others and uh, go out quietly, sneak out to the living room where the tree was decorated and the lights lit and the press around it. And back then we had forced air heat out of the floor and I'd find a register and go sit on the warm register with the air blowing up. <laughs> just just gaze at all those gifts and the excitement of what was to come. Because you couldn't sleep all night long. I can remember yeah, that's that. Right. I couldn't yeah. sleep all night. <laughs> yeah. That is so great. I could just envision you as a as a kid just sneaking into the living room with the Christmas tree. And man, that, that brings about even memories of my, my own. Randy, as we know this time of year, yeah, it's a really fun time for, for families. It's a fun time to, to be together, to give gifts and that sort of thing. We, so we think about the real reason of, of Christmas with our Lord and Savior Jesus who came to earth. I want you to talk for just a second about the incarnation and maybe specific passages that, that really just help to Grip your heart and grip your mind during this time of year as you think about Christ, God coming in the flesh to save his people from their sins. What a tremendous thought. Just talk for just a second about ways that you anchor your heart and mind uh, with scriptures about that unbelievable truth. Part of what helps me with this is I you know, seek to read through the scriptures each year, and I like to use the MacArthur Daily Bible, not the MacArthur Study Bible, but the MacArthur Daily Bible. You know, all of the scripture points toward Christ in one way or another. And just as I'm reading, you know, the festivities of the season and the thing, the way we've got our house decorated now and everything, it's just those are visible reminders. But as I'm reading the scriptures, I'm just marveling as I'm reading it with fresh eyes toward Christ throughout the scriptures, how I see it, whether I'm uh, in Hosea right now, or I just finished Daniel and talking about the Christ return, or reading in 1 John now, just all of these passages, all of that just helps so much. I also just keep marveling at, you know, the scripture says that God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Mm. And you can't think about Easter without thinking about Christmas mm. first. And I just, as I revel in God's love for me and just the amazement of that 
And I think, you know, that starts with focusing on his coming, the incarnation, and just that wonderful story. And just trying to use some sanctified imagination to picture yourself being alongside Joseph or Mary or just all those events happening or Simeon later, his statement of faith. Part of what has helped me this year and last couple of years especially is um, in my office area downstairs of our basement of our home, I'm just playing Christmas music almost nonstop. And I like particularly instrumental music, many of the old hymns, but the, you know, the Christmas, the songs that have the good theology in them. And I like the instrumental music because sometimes the vocal music is distracting to me when I'm trying to study or work. But I got instrumental music going all the time. But I hear those those notes and it reminds me of the words of the songs. Mm-hmm. That just encourages me and encourages my delight in this this time of the year. That's exciting. And there are just really important ways that, that help to anchor our hearts and minds on Christ and, and the beauty of the incarnation. What a marvelous thing. Randy, it's always interesting to think about how people celebrate Christmas. I want you to talk a little bit about the Randy Patton family and some of the specific memories. We talked about your boyhood, but I want you to talk about when when the Lord blessed you with the family, you and, and Miss Cindy, and what did Christmas sort of look like, or what are some of the key memories that that you have of Christmas time in the Patton family? Well, uh, we have two children, uh, Jim and Becky, and Jim was born four days after I became a pastor of a church back in 1974. And, you know, life has got seasons. So during the 12 years I was pastor of that church and the kids were growing during that season of life, oftentimes our Christmases were spent traveling to my folks' home in southeastern Ohio, going to grandma and grandpa's house and being with them and the other relatives that would come in and everything. And those were happy, happy times. And my kids still remember those. One unique thing is I had a an aunt who lived in Columbus, Ohio, whose name was Marge. She was a single lady, and she was very fastidious and precise in the way she dressed. But one of her idiosyncrasies was when people would say something, she would respond, oh, really? In a real high-pitched voice, and she was known for that expression. One of our family jokes is, is that we're, we had stopped in Columbus to pick up Aunt Marge. She's sitting up front beside me, sending the two kids are sitting in the back. Becky's in the middle. And Aunt Marge, we're talking, and Aunt Marge is telling some story, and, or I tell some story, and she says, oh, really? And I look in the back, and my daughter holds up her finger. She's counting how many times <laughs> Aunt Marge has said, said, oh, really, while we're on this trip. And uh, so that's just one of those happy memories that grow out of that tradition. Later, as um, we were left the pastorate and I was serving in uh, my work where I was a consultant to churches here in Indiana before beginning to work with Nank, we kind of transitioned and we quit traveling to my parents' home and Cindy's parents began coming to see us and we stayed here. And then maybe later we go visit my parents at a little bit different time. And then now that our children are both married, and have kids, they're coming to see grandma and grandpa, which means they're coming to our house. Uh And so this is a wonderful time. We have six grandchildren now between the ages of uh, 18 and 12. And it's a happy time. Uh, Cindy decorates our home beautifully every year. It's just marvelous. And one of the sad days is in January when we finally decide, okay, we got to take all this down. (laughs) And uh, that's not a happy day. But one of the family traditions is Cindy does a marvelous job buying the gifts for the the kids and figuring out what would be just right for them, wraps the gifts just beautifully. Depending on when they come in, sometimes on Christmas Eve, we'll attend a church service, either ours or one of our ACBC members, one of your students, uh, Seth Lehman, pastor is real close to me, will go visit his church sometimes on Christmas Eve. Or sometimes we'll just stay home and depending on when people are arriving and things. And, but one of the family traditions is, is that kids take down their stockings, but Cindy's put special things in it on Christmas Eve. And one of the things that she did years and years ago when the kids were young, she started buying them all matching pajamas. And so each year the kids on Christmas Eve pull out their new matching pajamas, run to their rooms, put them on, come out, take pictures. So some of our family 
happy times or comparing the Christmas Eve pictures of the kids with their new pajamas on, you know. So the kids are getting to a point now where that tradition may be coming to an end. It's getting harder and harder to <laughs> get the ones that, that match, but that's been one of the happy times. And then on Sundays, we, um, it's going to be on Christmas morning, we always read the scripture, we have a meal. One of our traditions is that uh, we have the kids' Christmas tree downstairs here. That's really beautiful. I get to enjoy that a lot as I'm coming and going to my office and the kids get to open their gifts first and uh -huh. we have them do it one by one and be sure to thank the person that gave it to them. And then we usually have lots of good food and then adult sharing. It's just a very happy family centered time. That's great. Now you mentioned reading the scriptures. I, I know very common for people to read Luke chapter two. Are there other passages that, that you guys focus on on a Christmas morning? Well, Luke two would be a favorite uh -huh. and, you know, maybe uh, Matthew as well. Those are the ones we probably we would talk about, but sometimes we've also spent time just people given a testimony time about how Christ has ministered to you this year, how you're growing, what you're thankful for. I mean, as the giving of gifts, what you're thankful for, what Christ has done. Uh -huh. you no, know, it kind of varies. We're not not in a rut on any of that, I don't think. I mean, there's some patterns, but it's uh -huh. a lot of it has been influenced by as the children have grown and have are able to participate in more in different ways. You know, there's a time when I would hand out little pieces of paper and ask the kids to read two verses and comment, you know, we'd have all six of the grandkids or as many of them as could read at the time, reading and participating. Oh, that's so cool. I, I want you to help me to understand from Thanksgiving, we have a traditional sort of American meal that we, we always do. What, what does Christmas meal look like in the Patton household? Well, it's always delicious. And if you've been here once, you'd want to be invited back. I can assure you that. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that something that, that you participate in, Miss Cindy? She Well, she well I... I'm the one who's willing to go to Kroger as many times as needed to pick okay, up things okay. that were needed. But usually uh, Cindy and our daughter Becky kind of uh -huh. talk it through. And then uh, Jim's wife, Stacy, figure out what they want to contribute. And so, you know, a lot of times it'll be ham, sometimes uh, maybe turkey again, because we all love turkey. But sweet potato casserole uh -huh. and there'll be some pies. And Favorite pie, Randy? What, what's your favorite pie? Well, my favorite pie would probably be cherry or blackberry or raspberry. <laughs> just, pie, just pie in general. I love it. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I tell you what, that, that gets me excited even looking forward to celebrating Christmas and uh, so much to be grateful for. And I love that you mentioned the attitude of just thankfulness in our hearts and what that means to you. It's it's. I tell you, one of the neatest things that, that you just described, I think, are those different seasons is, you know, you have certain traditions, but some of those traditions morph and change and grow as, you know, you were the kids at one time and you're going to grandma and grandpa's house. And now all that shifts as you have children in your home and they grow up, get married and start having children and how that those traditions shift. And it is a special time for, for us as believers to acknowledge the, the goodness of God in sending our Lord Jesus and being able to celebrate that together as a family and the giving of gifts as a memory of who he is and what he's done. And Randy, this has been really helpful. Any other closing comments as you can think about Christmas traditions in the Patton household? Well, one of our traditions is, is that as we greet people, as we're out and about, we always say Merry Christmas. You know, there's been pushback against from some about saying they want to say happy holidays and things. And, uh, we try as a family, I think all of us would be telling people, Merry Christmas. Uh -huh. That's one little thing we try to do to express that it is about Christmas. It's not just, it is a holiday, but it's about Chris, it's about Christ. Amen. It is so true. And uh, to be honest, it makes me want to come visit the, the Patton household and, and see what that's like <laughs> on, a, on a Christmas morning and have some pie. Your family wouldn't let you go, but we can arrange for you to come by and have You're listening to Truth and Love, a podcast of ACBC. And this is honestly one of my favorite podcasts that we do of the entire year. I love being able to talk to 
some of our members and to find out a little bit about the things that, that they do during Christmas. I want to remind you of, of past episodes, not just in general. This is episode number 394. And so there are lots and lots of past episodes with all kinds of issues that we talk about. But I want to remind you about some of our past issues of Christmas traditions. And so I want to encourage you to, to go back into our vault find those. I think you'll be encouraged. You might even find some new traditions that you can implement in your own family, ways to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus and his coming in flesh to dwell among us, to pay for the penalty of our sin. And what a great thing that we should be celebrating. I love learning from these other brothers and sisters who have participated in the past. So go to our vault on the website to find out more of these Christmas traditions at biblicalcounseling.com. 